So remember the short that I posted about the WebCore 210, Webster Chicago Corporation? Well, I've been working on this thing. Tore a lot of the mechanism apart to go ahead and lube the supply table and the take-up table. Well, if it's in the other direction, then of course it's reversed. Went ahead and cleaned all the rubber on the rollers right here. They're just like turntable idlers but they actually engage the main flywheel right there, which is what moves the tape. So let's go ahead and power this thing on. Motors are running, so I'll show you how this thing works. So in the forward direction, we get this drive motor right there running, this idler, and it runs the main flywheel. And it also, there's a small idler underneath the real table, and it runs off the motor, and it's actually connected via the spring so it maintains basically constant tension for a clutch operation. I would have expected like a felt clutch, something like that, but no, this just maintains a very, very light pressure on the idler and that's what gives it the clutch operation. And of course, if I change the direction, then it's the exact opposite. Now this idler is being driven by that motor right there and it does drive the flywheel in the reverse direction. You can see this motor is running and it's taking up this reel table. Once again, it's like a clutch type operation. If I move it away, nothing, release it, then that spring actually makes a limited amount of contact to act like a take up constant torque clutch. Well, let's Go ahead and take a look at the bottom of this thing. Okay, there is the business end of this unit. And as you can see, every capacitor has been replaced in this thing. All the old domino capacitors, the tiger stripes, as well as the wax paper capacitors. Every capacitor has been replaced. With the exception of the electrolytics, the customer opted not to go ahead and replace those. They actually did ESR perfectly fine. I don't see any leakage. I've actually ran this thing. It works absolutely perfectly. So here is the record play switch and it just basically slides these contacts. So that contact is made with this slider. This contact is made, that one is not. So when you engage record, the switch actually moves to the left slightly and this whole slider block when I move to this position, so that pin and that pin will be bridged at this time. Much like this mode select switch, this does have different options for how you engage and disengage the heads as to what direction you're playing. And this just rotates the contacts around as you move the switch. Pretty standard wafer switch technology. But yeah, every capacitor has been replaced. Now, I did have an issue with this unit where the tone control, which is the lower portion of this pot, is seized in the volume control portion, which is the upper portion. But luckily, when this happened, the tone was at an absolute minimum, so that as you increase the volume, the tone does increase from bass to treble. I did contact the customer. He asked me to permanently set it in the, in the full treble position. So that's what this capacitor that capacitor and these two resistors, they're basically acting as a fixed tone control at this point. And it's just hanging out here where the connections are made. There's heat shrink and I folded it over while it was hot on these three terminals. So it's secured pretty good right there. I don't think we're gonna have any issues with that. Uh, when I did recap this, I try to use the original lead dress, which means I unsolder the capacitor from each end and then actually put the new capacitor through the terminal, bend it all the way over and resolder it on both ends. You can see every capacitor is applied that way with the exception of this one small cap. The original one was a huge capacitor and this is actually part of the lead of the capacitor that soldered to that switch. So I did have to actually wrap it, solder it, and then I used a zip tie. I know, not period correct, but it's gonna have to do because this cap is such a small cap compared to the original one. So I opted to go with original film capacitors to replace the wax paper capacitors. And as you can see, I don't know if you can make it on the camera, but that one is a 225. That's a 2.2 microfarad at 50 volt capacitor. Hopefully it shows up. 
This is a 105, a one microfarad 50 volt film capacitor to keep it as original as possible. I did opt to go ahead and leave the germanium diode right here instead of replacing it with the silicone. It's working perfectly. I did test it with the voltmeter. And like I said, working perfectly, no reverse leakage whatsoever. So that's the view of this unit. I'm gonna put it back together, wire up a plug, do a test recording, and hopefully it plays back perfectly fine. Okay, so I'm doing a test recording on this unit right now. And as you can see, the record level indicator is working absolutely perfectly. I was worried that that electric eye would have been dead by now. Anyhow, doing a recording, Go ahead and give it a few minutes and we'll play it back and hopefully everything is successful. I am so sorry I did not get to record the repair on this unit. I just did not have enough time. I'm so backed up right now. I had so much work to do and I just couldn't devote the time to trying to record every single clip on this unit. I hope you understand. Well, once again, that's it for the WebCore 210. And I'm once again very sorry I didn't show you this, the replacement of all these components in this unit. Look at the size of that thing, two microfarad 50 volt capacitor. This is the one microfarad 50 volt. And luckily the customer did supply his own replacement pinch roller as this thing is hard as a rock. Yeah, I mean, you cannot uh, just barely, barely move it whatsoever. But anyhow, it is all back together running again. We'll go ahead and put it in the play mode here. And then that is what was recorded on it on that side of the tape. I only recorded about five minutes and then I stopped it and reversed it because you can record and play in either direction and it's working perfectly. Actually sounds pretty doggone good for a voice type reel-to-reel -reel that really wasn't meant to record music in the first place. But that's it. I certainly hope you enjoyed a look at this unit, not the complete repair. Everyone, have a great day. Once again, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Bye-bye. Webster Chicago Corporation, constant tension. Slider box, it's not, not period correct, but I tried to use all paper caps to replace all paper caps in this unit. This is actually one microfarad 50 volt cap. I don't know if you can make it I don't know if you can pick it up in the video, but I opted not to go with an electrolytic to replace this capacitor, which is a one at 50. And then there was another one over here. That I can't find right now. If not, thanks for watching. Okay, so I'm doing a test recording on this unit and the electric eye is working absolutely perfectly. You can hear some music playing in the background, which we will play back very shortly in the conclusion of this repair video that unfortunately I did not record. I just had too much depth into this unit to actually try to record everything.